Welcome back. You're watching Market Farafat on ET Now. Let's keep it going with all the stocks that have been buzzing in trade, and let's talk about India Mart and Tamesh. That one is a stock that is buzzing away in trade today. Why is that so? We have a note that came in from uh, Jefferies maintaining a buy target price of three thousand four hundred rupees per share. What they are saying is that the investors had indicated some bit of a concern around the execution challenges, slowing uh, subscriber addition, and SaaS investments. But investments uh, investors have agreed now that India Mart's structural growth potential and moves are still there. They expect. Paid subscription addition to pick up uh, from around uh, 3,000 per quarter to uh, in FY24 to 6,000 per quarter in uh, FY25. So doubling is what they're expecting in terms of paid subscribers as well. Further, uh, you know, the valuation that is something that would support the company as well. It's not too uh, high devalued. And uh, what Jeffries is expecting and what they're highlighting is that India Mart is to deliver strong. Uh, Cago growth. When you look at it in terms of 19% Cago growth so over FY24 to FY26 as well, and an EPS growth of around 25% in terms of Cago for uh, the next two years as well. So let's keep an eye out on that. Interestingly, a good up move that we're seeing in the stock as well. Absolutely, an up move for India Mart. Not the same when it comes to Spice Jet because that one is sulking away in uh, trade today. And one of the main reasons uh, that uh, the reason why the stock is actually seeing that downfall of about 7% or so, Vinny, is because the company's uh, chief operating officer as well as chief commercial officer have resigned with immediate effect. Uh, what Spicejet is saying that due to the strategic restructuring, several members of the commercial team, including the chief commercial officer, is left with immediate effect. And they are saying that the company is, continues to see significant growth in the revenue as well as the load factor. But the fact that you have a uh, crucial uh, or key personnel is actually quit, uh, resigning with immediate effect. You can see Spicejet down about 6.3% as we speak. Okay, let's move on and bring on board uh, Nira Chetta as well on the technicals now. Nira, very good afternoon to you as well, and uh, thank you so much for joining in with us on Market for Afar. Let's keep it going then with the stocks and the first stock that you picked up for us today is GNFC. When you're looking at this very subdued move in the last six months, last one month specifically, we have seen a bit of a fall also uh, coming in. Uh, what is the view now on GNFC? Where do you see it headed in terms of charts? Would you buy or maybe still cautious on this one? Yeah, I think uh, you know the fall uh, is over for uh, you know specifically this uh, sector. Uh, so you know fertilizer as a whole, I believe uh, this is one stock which can do uh, you know very well. Uh, I know uh, you know a little bit about uh, chemicals as well, but I definitely believe you know 610 is a very good support for this particular stock and. Definitely, uh, you know, this stock can go up from here up to that six eighty seven hundred dollars level. So it's a good level to add your position. You can keep stop loss of six zero five for longs uh, in this particular stock. This stock has come down from eight hundred odd uh, onwards, so about twenty five thirty percent fall already uh, there. Don't see it falling much from current levels. All right, that's the view coming in on GNFC and how this one is placed when you talk about the charts. But Ankita, let's talk about HIL and why is this stock in focus today? Well, yes, just look at the stock. It is holding on to its uh, gains since morning. Uh, it's up almost four percent, and in an otherwise somber market, it is still holding on to those gains. Well, this CK Billa Group firm has said that it has signed an agreement with the Christia Polytech for the acquisition of Topline, a popular brand of pipes and fittings at an enterprise value of two hundred and sixty-five crore rupees. Also, the company will acquire the Christia's four wholly owned subsidiaries: Topline Industries, Aditya Polytechnic, Aditya Sub Industries, and Sainath Polymers. Now, H. HIL's management also says that the acquisition is a significant step towards HIL's commitment to further accelerate its fast-growing pipes and fittings business in the estimated 55,000 crore rupees Indian PVC pipes and fittings market. And on the back of this, uh, the stock is up and away 4% in trade today. Okay, surely keeping an eye out on that. Let's pull up the charts for BSC. Why we're keeping an eye out on BSC today is obviously a uh, short while ago, a couple of hours back, we didn't see that what NSC came out and what NSC board did was they cleared that they will be reducing uh, the transaction charges uh, across their segments from the next fiscal year. That's from first of April. This is going to be ex uh, effective, and the charges that they're going to be uh, reducing will be for across cash equity as well as equity derivatives as well by one percent that they'll be reducing the charges from the first of April now. Obviously, if NSC is doing that, you know, maybe following suit, it could be expected that BSC also 
would do that as well. And for NSC also, what they are highlighting in the press release, they said that you know this could maybe uh, impact them nearly by around 130 crore rupees mm -hmm. in terms of the impact that would come in uh, for on the financials of NSC. So yes, because of that, you know we saw very sharp fall that clearly came in only when this announcement came in because BSE could be something that would be following suit. Let's not forget that in the recent times you have seen uh, BSE gaining in terms of volumes, a bit of market as well, that shift coming in. So maybe that's something that is factoring in, keeping an eye out on BSE today down almost six percent as of now. Days lowest point is what BSE is trading at. All right, that is BSE for you. That is uh, seeing a downtick in excess of about five percent. But let's talk about ICICI uh, Lombard General Insurance in that particular counter is in focus because uh, the company's uh, gross uh, direct premium collections in the month of February actually saw an uptick of as much as 38.6% on a year-on-year -year basis. In fact, it outperformed the industry's 11.6% uh, growth. Apart from that, you had New India Assurance also that underperformed the industry with clocking just 4.2% growth. The stock actually of India, uh, New India Assurance is also down in uh, trade uh, today. If you look at uh, that, uh, you also have uh, Star Health also that is uh, under pressure because it has underperformed the industry growth. So that one also is uh, uh, seeing some sort of downtick. ICSA Lombard on an intraday basis was seeing gains of about 2.3 or percent or so. Now that one also has given up some of these gains. Okay, let's move on to stock number 20 for today. And Neera, we have picked up Gujarat State Fertilizers and Chemicals last one month. The stock has seen a bit of a pressure coming in, a bit of a correction coming in after a sort of an up move that it saw. Um, would you still expect some more correction or is it time to again uh, start entering uh, Gujarat State Fertilizers as well? I think it's a very good level to enter uh, into this stock. So, uh, last 6 or 8 months, the volumes have been terrific in this particular stock. Uh, no doubt it has witnessed a huge breakout above that 180 odd levels and then you know it went up to 300 plus. From there, uh, you know, there's at least a 30% correction uh, which has come in. And I believe uh, the time is right for this particular stock to move up again. And as I said, you know, uh, fertilizer as a pack. Uh, looks very good from current levels because of this correction they've all come towards their support levels and very important support levels so i believe this stock can now again bounce back up towards the 250 levels look to buy this stock with a stop loss of around 200 and uh, you know 250 somewhere uh, you know it will uh, witness some resistance all right, moving on, uh, Snehi, you've taken paint counters. Uh, I believe it's on the note coming in for Mac from Macquarie. Uh, is Macquarie painting a colourful picture for paint uh, sector? Well, Cheryl, not exactly. We can't say that exactly, but yes, it's on the back of a note coming in from Macquarie. And they have um, initiated their views, or they have rather uh, discussed their views on a whole host of counters when it comes to the paint sector. For Asian paints, they've maintained their outperform rating with a target price of 4,000 rupees per share. Kansai Nerolak as well maintained, the, uh, maintained a neutral rating, but they've gone ahead and trimmed the target price to 320 rupees from 360 rupees per share. For Berger, they've maintained an underperform but uh, yet uh, cut the target price to rupees 490 from 520 earlier and they say that Grasim's launch is not materially hurting Asian paints. So uh, when we talk about painting a colourful picture, Macquarie has gone ahead and done that only for Asian paints. You can see Asian paints is the only stock among the entire paint basket that is holding on to the green. They say that Asian paints uh, recent price cuts are more aligned with the history of keeping gross margin in a tight band. They see margin head room from lower rebates and post price cuts as well. Uh, the, the checks indicate that Grasim's product may be priced 7 to 9 percent lower versus Asian paints at a dealer level. And Grasim paint prices also suggest similar discounting as payers like Berger and Kansai. They've cut earnings estimate for Berger and Kansai and Anulak on rising costs of access for smaller players. So, on the back of that, you can see Berger and Grasim both down approximately 2 percent as we speak. But Asian paints is the one that is managing to still hold on to the greens uh, besides. Uh, today being a somber market session. Okay, keeping an eye out on the pain sector today. But let's move on. And Neera, HDFC Bank making to your list as well. Today, a very different story for HDFC Bank because it's among the top gainers in the Nifty 50. Maybe the only one maybe trying to pull up the Nifty 50 is among the names as well. So, Neera, different story now panning out for HDFC Bank. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, people who are holding on to HDFC Bank. Uh, they were panicking, you know, looking at the other banks and the other stocks moving up. They have indicated today 
uh, with everything else falling and you know this is one stock uh, which has done very well uh, you know uh, just a joke but uh, having said that uh, i believe uh, this stock is going to move up um, this stock should go up towards the 1550 1600 1600 levels very importantly this stock fell from 1750 or to 1400 1350 or uh, volumes there were terrific so it does suggest you know some good buying has gone in around those 1350 1400 1420 band and now this stock has broken out uh, so i believe this stock can do very well going forward where other stocks can probably you know be a little cautious this is one stock which is already seen uh, you know a huge round of selling so this is one stock where buying will come in uh, one can look to buy the stock with a stop loss of around 1420 All right, that is HDFC Bank, which uh, Nia feels is has now uh, finally actually broken out of a range. And you know, uh, 2024, uh, Vinny, everyone was expecting uh, the HDFC Bank stock to see a good uh, recovery or revival. And uh, since that did not happen this time, you've seen a lot of memes actually making your way on Instagram with HDFC Bank, isn't it? Absolutely, HDFC Bank. Thank God it was not ITC, right? Two years ago, I think ITC had, had its time. <laughs> ITC had its time. Now it was taken over by HDFC Bank. And after those memes, ITC did see a run up. So let's see if HDFC also sees a run up. At least Nira was saying that it will see Absolutely. a run up. Absolutely. So surely keeping an eye on that. But let's move on to the next one and then talk about uh, M and M. Ankita, why is this one in focus today? Well, yes, uh, M&M, the automaker, has released its production and sales figures for February compared to the same period uh, last year. And where, according to the latest business update, the company's production surged 26%, reaching 73,380 units compared to 58. 1203 units produced in uh, February last year. Now, similarly, the sales figures also witnessed a rise with a 26% increase that recorded at 71384 units compared to 56551 units in the corresponding period last year. However, the company experienced a decline in exports with numbers dropping by 31.6% to 1539 units compared to 2250 units exported in February of the previous year. And on the back of this business update, the M&M is spoken to, uh, is in focus today, but right now it is trading absolutely flat. That is M and M for you. That is in focus, but the stock is doing absolutely nothing in our trade today. But on that note, we slip into a break. Welcome back. You're watching Market for Tafat on ET now, and we have uh, let's talk about Rico Auto and how is this one actually looking on the charts uh, to you? A stock that we don't talk about much, but if you look at the performance that the stock has given over the last six months, or be for one year, has been good. In fact, for the last six months, I believe over the last one to two months is when the stock has seen a sharp spike, isn't it? Ah uh, yes. Uh, so see, this stock has given a very big breakout. You know, 15 yearly breakout. Post 2007, first time this stock moved above the 110 levels, and uh, you know, post that definitely a big movement came in today. In the last couple of days, the stock is down, but I believe you know this stock has the legs to move up towards that 165, 170 odd levels. It's at a good level to buy at for today, uh, and definitely go ahead and look to buy. Uh, I believe you can keep a stop loss of around 115 for your longs. And uh, you know, one sixty, one sixty-five, where uh, I look to uh, you know book profits as my target. Let's move on and talk about uh, United Breweries. That one is in focus after they made a new launch. Queen Fisher uh, is a mild beer, is uh, competitively priced at rupees 80 for 500 ml, and you know they have been focusing a lot more on the launches as well. This is the third launch that they're seeing in the last few weeks, and beer would be uh, extended to other cities. Right now, it's just in Goa, so we will be seeing more of it coming to other cities as well. Earlier, they had launched uh, um, LP as well, which was in Maharashtra, which is. Uh, Famous in Maharashtra as well, so yes, we're keeping an eye out on uh, you know United Breweries on the back of these uh, launches. Now, what uh, analysts are saying that uh, the launch for Queen Fisher versus uh, the decade-old King Fisher, which they have, which accounts for around 60 to 70 percent of the volumes, is a significant positive that one is seeing. And the King Fisher as a brand uh, may have been uh, witnessing some bit of a uh, fatigue, but yes, uh, they're quite positive in terms of Queen Fisher and may help in recruiting. Uh, Some bit of women consumers, I believe that's what they think as well. Though I don't think they're behind in that terms as well. At least uh, not from mine and Cheryl's side. But yes, uh, United Breweries today holding on to gains of 1.5 percent. 
All right, new launches coming in for United Breweries. But uh, Nirav, let's talk about VA Tech Vabag and how is this one looking on the charts to you? Because this one also, uh, just like a lot of uh, companies which are into these infra or capex related themes, have been doing well. VA Tech Vabag, I believe, is uh, is a uh, is a part of a water integrated or water uh, solutions sort of a business. How does this one look to you on the charts? Because it's already had a very good run, isn't it? Uh, so, uh, you know, interesting case this stock is, uh, when you see the chart, you know, this stock from 2015, uh, it was around that 900 odd level, it fell all the way to 80 odd level, so you know, a 90% fall. And post that, you are seeing, you know, post 2020 slowly and steadily, this stock is now moving up. Uh, I think this is uh, one stock which is going to go for 100% replacement important levels have been broken out on this journey on the upside and uh, definitely it is now trading near a very good support area of around 700 odd. Uh, I believe uh, this stock can move up towards uh, that uh, 900, 920 odd level which will be your target. Uh, you can keep a stop loss of around 675 for longs. Uh, this is a good stock to add in your portfolio as well. Okay, good stock to add to your portfolio. We are like Wabak. That's the stock Nino is keeping an eye out on. Stock number 26 for today. Day, but that was the last talk for today. So thank you so much, uh, Nida, Osho, Ankita, as well as Nehi for joining you with us today on Market Fatafat. And it's a goodbye from Sharon, myself, as well as the team who put the show together.